Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been a little while, um, but today's video is all about my surgery in Turkey. I went to Turkey in January and I got rhinoplasty and brow lift and cheek lift. They also call it a fox eye. So I thought what better way to explain the process um, than creating a YouTube video about it because it's quite in depth. Um, I know that I did a lot of research looking into this before confirming my surgery. So I wanted to run through with you guys my experience in Turkey and everything that I got done. Okay, so for me, this process started well and truly six months prior to my surgery. Me and one of my best friends wanted to get rhinoplasty done. So we did plenty of research within Australia and also Turkey and comparing the two like rhinoplasty especially and like cosmetic surgery in general really in turkey is very specialized they're very experienced and the pricing difference was absolutely astonishing so we did plenty of research within australia to get rhinoplasty done was about like 20k and then we did our research in turkey and it was like nearly half the price so we did plenty of research looking at specific surgeons recommendations and through our research, we wanted to go through an agency that provided everything. So it was all done for you from um, picking you up from the airport to dropping you off, the accommodation, the surgery and everything in between. We thought that would be the best way to go about it just to make life a little bit easier instead of having to worry about getting to the hospital, um, you know, like all of the little bits and pieces um, that come with the journey as it is, you know, a big journey over to Turkey to get something like that done. So within our research, we found an agency called Cygnus. They were absolutely amazing. Highly, highly recommend them. Um, they took care of absolutely everything. We communicated with them on WhatsApp. We sent through our photos. They recommended specific surgeons for us. And the pricing was absolutely amazing and it included literally everything other than flights. So flights were completely separate depending on like how soon you want to get it done. Like flights can be reasonably expensive coming from Australia. You have to fly from wherever you are in Australia to then Dubai, Dubai to Turkey. Um, so it was overall like super easy to organize. Um, then we locked in our date booked our flights and we were waiting for the day. Okay, so for me specifically, I actually wanted to get rhinoplasty and also belphoplasty, I think they call it. So it's where they slice open your eyelids and basically take the excess skin um, around your eye lid area. And I was a bit skeptical because I have quite sunken eyes and my brow bone is so prominent. So I wasn't sure whether they were going to be able to do that but it was something that I had to wait until I was there to talk to the surgeon whether that was possible. So that was what my original plan was, definitely the rhinoplasty, and I wanted to snatch my eyes a little bit. When it does come to the rhinoplasty, it was partially cosmetic and also like health related. I did have a deviated septum, so that was something that they were going to fix for me as well. Um, and now I can breathe absolutely amazing. So that was the plan going into um, surgery. But basically what happened was we flew into Turkey. They arranged a driver to pick us up, take us to our hotel. Um, and the amazing thing was that the hotel that they arranged was basically where everyone that was getting surgery or some kind of procedure was also staying at that hospital, um, at the hospital, at the hotel. So when you arrive at the hotel, there's like everyone's somewhat getting something done. So you didn't feel abnormal or anything like that. I thought it was a great way to um, organize everything. So I arrived at the hotel and then it was the next day that we were going into surgery. So I believe I went into surgery um, quite late on the 23rd of January. Um, I think it was about 6 or 7 p.m. And then I didn't come out of surgery until about like 10 or 11 p.m. at night. So before going into surgery, I obviously met with my surgeon, had a chat with him, showed him some of my inspo pics. Um, I do have quite a petite face. So when it came to my nose, I did have 
quite a big nose before and I showed him some of the photos and because I do have quite a petite face I was able to make some you could say large changes when it comes to my nose so um he said yep I feel like we'll be able to do that when it came to my eyes um like I said I have a prominent brow bone and my eyes were quite sunken so we weren't able to do the velpoplasty but we did decide to go with a brow lift and a cheek lift so that was pretty much what I was going in for um overall the surgery went really really well he said that I had really great skin to work with so he was really able to give me the nose that I wanted coming out of surgery was a big shock and I think that's something that isn't really spoken about and I think it depends on what kind of procedure you're getting done and how intense or like intense the change is that you're wanting and when it came to my nose specifically the change was quite dramatic so um i was very shocked when i came out of surgery i had instant bruising and swelling i had um, stitches on the side of my face and also in my hairline um, my brows were very straight and up um, and it was very much a shock to the system so after coming out of surgery, um, I stayed in the hospital overnight. The nurses were absolutely amazing. Throughout the whole process, we had a translator and most people spoke um, English anyway. So like my surgeon actually spoke a lot of English. So he was really easy to understand. He was absolutely amazing. Um, the whole process was super seamless. Um, medication and painkillers were provided and I honestly didn't have a lot of pain it was more just the swelling was quite tight and I had a lot of instant bruising around my eye area and I actually got a bloodshot eye for quite some time um, after surgery we're in for say a night and then the next day we got transported back to our hotel and we stayed in Turkey for about, I think it was about seven days, so about a week. Um, and through that time, we literally were just recovering. It was very cold in Turkey in January. So we stayed in our hotel, ventured downstairs to go to dinner um, and breakfast and things like that. And then about three to four days later, we went back to the hospital for our checkup. And then the day that we were leaving, um, I went in and I got my cast removed and everything was okay. But my swelling and my bruising was still quite intense. So the flight home was perfectly fine. I didn't have any problems whatsoever. It was more just getting used to the fact that, okay, I've got to trust the process. This is quite intense. Um, I don't look like myself. My nose is so swollen, my face is swollen. Like I went through the whole journey of the swelling starting, you know, around the middle of my face and then dropping to my cheeks where I literally looked like a chipmunk. So I felt like I went through it all. Um, but overall, the whole surgery, the agency was absolutely amazing. It was super seamless and super easy. And overall, really, really good experience. And then we arrived home. So once arriving back into Australia, the funniest part in traveling was that obviously I didn't look like myself. I had bruising everywhere, I was super swollen. So as you know, going through the airport, I don't necessarily look like my passport at this point in time. Um, so that was a little bit of a challenge. Um, obviously I got through okay. When it came to coming into Australia, um, Australian passports are scanned like with a computer or a camera and it was not scanning my face. So that was a moment in time where I was like, okay, yep, I really do not look like myself right now. <laughs> um, but overall, after getting home, I literally just was on bed rest. I wasn't able to exercise or anything like that. And it was very much trust the process day by day. So for me personally, because I had quite a bit of work done um, obviously to my nose but also around like my eye area I had stitches in the side of my face and also in my hairline like you can see where is it I have like a bald patch here it is I have like a bald patch here and on the other side where I had stitches in the side of my face because they just went um so yeah, it took some time for my brows to really start to settle. 
um, and everything started to settle. So it was probably around the three to four week mark that all of my bruising was gone. I actually had a really bad bloodshot eye for quite some time. That took a solid month to, to completely disappear. Um, and after that, each day I just started to feel like I was starting to look more like myself. Like obviously I do look different to what I was before, um, but everything was starting to settle. The bruising, the swelling was starting to go down. So my biggest thing in this whole process was trust the process, take it day by day. Each day gets better and you've just got to be patient. So my surgery was on the 23rd of January in Istanbul in Turkey and the date today is I think, is it the 11th? I think it's the 11th of April. So I'm a few months post-op now, four months post-op-ish, three, four. Um, so yeah, everything has really settled now, but still like I'm still going through the process of everything still um, settling and I'm starting to look more and more like myself. Like um, when it comes to rhinoplasty, it takes about a solid 12 months for the swelling to completely disappear and go down. So it's a long journey, um, but there are some days where I wake up and my nose seems really swollen. Um, the tip of my nose is slowly going down and settling, but I'm really happy with my overall look. I'm loving how it's like turning out and everything is still settling. Um, my side profile is cute. I'm really happy. Um, and I cannot thank the agency enough and I'll tag them below. So they're called Cygnus. They were super easy to deal with. Um, they check in with me all the time. Um, and if you go onto their social media, you'll be able to see their before and afters of me. Um, there is no way that I'm sharing it on here because yeah, I look really different in a good way, but yeah, it was, it was very, very different to begin with. Um, but yeah, I even look at photos and videos that I've taken, like, you know, four weeks post-op, I went to Bali and I look back on it. I'm like, oh my God, like I look different again now. So it's definitely a trust the process kind of situation. Um, but one of the things that I have been getting asked is when it comes to the rhinoplasty, I've had a couple of girls message me that know that I've had it done and they basically say, oh my God, I'm seven days post-op and like, I am having an identity crisis. I don't know if my nose suits me. Um, all of these things just in shock, basically. And I think that's just one thing that isn't spoken about is that, yeah, the initial shock is definitely there, but you do just have to trust the process and it all tends to blend and settle in time. So you just want to take it day by day. But I would say like four weeks, so one month post-op is when you start to really see the changes and it settles and you're starting to love them. So, you know, you've got to allow yourself that time. Um, and like I said, I'm still in the healing process. And as the days go on, I feel like I continue to look that little bit different. It settles, the swelling goes down. Like there's some days I wake up and I look in the mirror. I'm like, oh my God, I look like little Miss Piggy today. So it's definitely a trust the process, but I'm excited to see how I'm looking in say 12 months post-op because um, that's where all the swelling's gone down and that's your final result. So Cygnus have actually reached out to me and basically said that anyone that watches this video or is following me um, and are interested in some of the information about rhinoplasty or fox eye or any of their other procedures because they do lots of other procedures um, that you can reach out to them and mention me and they'll be able to help you um, with your journey and also provide you with a discount on your surgery. Um, they honestly were a dream to work with. Like if you're skeptical about going to Turkey to get um, any cosmetic surgery done, then I highly recommend them. They just made the process super duper simple and super easy. Um, we didn't worry at all while we were there. They were very attentive, um, always on time. The surgeons were amazing um, and they specialize in lots of different cosmetic surgery. So if you go to their social media, you'll be able to see lots of photos before and afters. 
table photos. Um, and these are all things that we looked into when we were looking into booking our surgery um, initially. Like you always look at the table photos and inspo photos and before and afters and all those kinds of things. So they've got plenty on there, but you can have a chat with them through their WhatsApp and you can send them photos of what you're wanting done, your inspiration, and they'll be able to give you some kind of feedback of whether that is possible. Um, and give you available dates and things like that. But honestly, can't recommend them enough. If anyone has any questions, you can comment below. I'd be happy to answer them. I'm super transparent um, with this whole journey. Um, it was a journey to say the least, but I'm so glad that I did it and I'm really, really happy with my results. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And like I said, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment below. I'd be happy to answer them. And I hope this video was helpful for anyone interested in going to Turkey. And I will see you guys in my next video.